Hi there, welcome to part 9 of a series of uh, short videos I'm doing on uh, Julian Huxley's book Essays in Popular Science and Aldous Huxley's Brave New World. Um, in the last chapter I was touching upon how um, he's saying here that um, if, if a small tadpole is given um, actual fed thyroid substance, its own um, own thyroid remains very much under, underdeveloped and uh, I was talking about uh, steroids, how um, people given steroids it interferes with the endocrine system and starts to shut down their own reproductive glands it's uh, basically the same principle for example if you were going to give a young boy um, uh, anabolic steroids, synthetic steroids you know like hormone replacement he may not naturally hit puberty, his own um, testicles may remain dormant, you know, the pituitary gland won't trigger it, you're going to cut that signal off, you're going to interfere. Um, so actually, if you were to control the amount given to him, either by pill or injection, you can actually maybe affect, yeah, you could affect his development and growth, just as um, if you were to uh, shut down the um, uh, amount of growth hormone he's naturally producing and naturally give it to him by injection or tablet you can control um, that process um, let's read in a little bit more about that um, talking about changes in temperature how it can affect the thyroid it says here this comp compensation also operates with regard to the temperature Tadpoles brought up at unusually low temperatures, showing unusually large thyroids, and vice versa. In a cold-blooded animal, of course, activity in general is greater with an increase of temperature. The thyroid is a regulator of the uh, general chemical activity. Inject a man or dog or a tadpole with a little thyroid, and his metabolism, as measured by the amount of oxygen, consumed and carbon dioxide given off will rise considerably. It thus appears that when temperature rises raises the general activity of the tadpole's body, less cool is made upon the thyroid and so it tends to shut down and, and to grow less rapidly than it normally would do so. So uh, yeah, controlling the growth, yeah, basically. Uh, and here we go in, yeah, still the, on the um, the tadpole uh, chapter. This is this is a, a section I've um, connected to a brave new world. I've actually marked the page in a brave new world. It's he reads here. It is possible, or oh, sorry, is it possible that the different races of mankind differ in their um, quantitative endocrine makeup, and that this difference is in its turn responsible for the many for many of the morphological differences between them so he's saying you know are the is the difference of the races due to their internal uh, endocrine system processes um, which is interesting um, Then I'll move on to um, determination of sex. And I don't know if I've covered this, I don't think I have, because it's relevant. He talks about uh, something called a gyndromorph, which only happens, I believe, in the insect kingdom. Um, here it says, uh, he calls them sex mo mosaics. It's basically you can have an insect that's half female and half male, but not literally half male on one side and half female on another side I mean, you, you know, very strange um, let's have a look here, bear with me so he's talking about how the chromosomes the uh, sex chromosomes in insects when when, um, when they're, when they're um, unevenly balanced if you get XX, more XX than XY you end up having an insect that's uh, you know, a mixture of male or female. I believe that's what he's saying. Um, so he's understanding about how XX means female and XY means male. Um, you, can you see it? You can probably see there. That's, that's what I'm talking about. 
I've got an insect. I think the male has a wing and the female doesn't, so it's half male and half female. Um, but later on, he reads, uh, in mammals, these sex mosaics, as we may call them, do not occur because the substances secreted by their reproductive organs pass into the circulation and influence their sexual characters equally all over the body. Yeah, that's, so that's why you can have a sex change, right? You can, um, uh, a, a man can start taking synthetic oestrogen and his hips will widen, grow breasts and um, all of that stuff. And vice versa. Um, seems to work a little differently with insects. It's interesting he's noting that. Um, Yeah, more on the X and XY, because uh, it's intersexuality. Uh, I think he's covering insects here still. If it goes so far as to lead to a complete reversal, an animal will be produced with the appearance and functions of one sex, but with a chromosome constitution proper to the other. With, when such an animal comes to reproduce, this must lead to upsets of the sex ratio in the next generation. In frogs, for instance, the sex chromosomes are XX in the female and XY in the male. When a female is converted into a functional male, she, or he as we should now say, still have the two Xs. Therefore, when this animal mates with a normal female, which will also possess the two X chromosomes, all the sperms and eggs alike will contain an X and all the offspring will therefore be XX in constitution and therefore females. Such an experiment has actually been carried out and nothing but females obtained among the 700 offspring. So there's the, um, the way that you can control you know, how many males and females you are um, producing. And in a brave new world, you know, they have total control over how many people they reproduce, who's a male, who's female, who's what they call a, I think it's called a free martin, in which they're sterile, they, you know, they don't reproduce, basically. Hmm. Yeah, one of the most puzzling things so far I've discovered about sex is the ratio of male and females. Uh, later on here it reads, if this proves to be true, the power of controlling the sex of her children, of having boys and girls at will, will be to a considerable extent within her grasp. Oh, and here we read, um, We can see the characters and instincts of the two sexes as two divergent possibilities of human or animal constitution, both present potentially in all individuals of the race, and only waiting at the right soil to develop. From this point of view, it is easy to understand the fact that has struck so many observers of human nature that feminine characters are often latent in men, masculine in women, and in particular circumstances may emerge to their own surprise and sometimes confusion. The fact of intersexuality shows us that we may have to revise not only our moral judgments but our legal practice with the regard to human abnormalities of sex in human beings and the knowledge we have we have acquired of the sex chromosomes is bound in the not too distant future to lead to a considerable measure of control over what until recently was one of the greatest mysteries of life. Wow. Yep. So, um, again, earlier on in, uh, in the um, previous videos, uh, I talked about how um, Huxley was saying, uh, is, is it a physical, uh, biological trait that um, determines you know, a sexual identity, the way our behaviour, um, or is it how we're socially raised? And he was bringing up that issue. And I was saying it's, um, it's primarily biological, you know, and he was saying that not necessarily so. Um, another thing I'm going to throw in here, regards to the blurring of the sexes, is um, something I read about um, about um, hormone blockers, some, something called bisphenol A, and it's found in plastics, and that's apparently a testosterone blocker, and um, it's also found in cosmetics and makeup and like women wear so if the environment is um, 
and also uh, on top of that, a lot of um, let's say these makeups and, and other um, things with plastic in them, they contain synthetic oestrogens, uh, things that mimic oestrogen, and if that happens, um, boys, males can be feminized basically. Um, and so again, you've got the blurring of the gender there on, done chemically, which I think that um, Julian Huxley would be keen on. Just thought I'd throw that in there. Um, in the next chapter, I'm, so I'm going to go right into a uh, brave new world, and we can we can compare. Uh, in a brave new world, it, yeah, it talks about the cloning process. Uh, where you get uh, fertilized human eggs in a vitro outside and, uh, and then causing them to split into a, a identical genetic copies of the original and the process can be re repeated many times so you're basically talking about cloning um, something called hypnopedia they use um, that's sub uh, basically programming people in their sleep subconsciously that's hypnopedia I think I pronounced it right and also a Pavlovian experiment, you know, the um, uh, Pavlovian used to um, basically um, test uh, dogs, he would, um, you know, see if he can get a response, like uh, if he'd ring a bell, they'd salivate, if he put food and they relate the bell and the food together and they produce a response there. Um, and I also mentioned about the, um, the caste system, the scientific caste system, um, alphas, betas, um, deltas, gammas and epsilons and I will add uh, epsilons and gammas I believe their their growth is actually stunted not only is their intelligence stunted their growth is stunted so it's directly relevant to um, control of the growth cycle that we've just been discussing isn't it, it's, it's right on par with that so um, I'm going to go into uh, Aldous Huxley's Brave New World now in the uh, next few chapters um, so stay with me